Okay, so here's an interesting problem. I really like this one. This one's fun. Generally, these actuarial type problems require you to have a few tricks in your bag, and this is no different. We have uh, two random variables, x1, x2, that are independent observations from a normal distribution with mean 1 and variance 1. Let's see here. And we'd like to find the expected value of the absolute value of x1 minus x2. As I do in all my problems when I'm solving them, I like to give you a, a little list of facts that you really need to know before tackling this problem. Um, facts that you would need to know not only for this problem, but perhaps other problems on the actual test. They're very helpful to know, again, because they can be applied to many problems. So the first fact here is uh, linear combinations of normally distributed random variables are also normally distributed. So sums, differences of normal random variables are still normally distributed with their appropriate means and variances. Okay, we're going to use this fact. Another fact we're going to use is the actual formula for the normal density. This is something good to have memorized and under your belt before you take the test. And, and that density is given here. 1 divided by sigma on the square root of 2 pi e to the negative x minus mu quantity squared 2 sigma squared. So what we wanted to do is find the expected value of this. Now what, what you, you might be tempted to do is actually do this by brute force. Uh, of course these tests are timed and they're wanting to see how clever you are in using tricks, these math tricks. So we're not going to do it by brute force but we're going to do it by using the, the facts that we have listed there. So if we let w equal to x1 minus x2 we can immediately employ our fact one. We know now that wow w is also normally distributed and we can get its expected value. The expected value of a random variable is the, the expected the difference in this case of the expected values uh, which was actually given to us uh, minus x2 expected value of x2 which is equal to and uh, we get it from here this is just 1 minus 1 so we immediately get that the expected value of w is 0, which is not really a surprise. Okay, since these were independent observations, the variance falls out as well very quickly. The variance of w, in this case since they are independent, is the, is the difference of the variances. So the variance of x1 minus the variance of x2, which is just equal to the variance of each of these was 1. Whoops, I made a mistake. That should be a plus. And that's just 1 plus 1, and this is just equal to 2. So the variance of w is 2. But again, not only do we have the, the actual mean and the variance of w, we actually know what the distribution is. So now using fact 2, since we know it is a normal distribution with mean, so this is actually our mean here, mu. This is our variance, right? Then we know what f of w is. Okay, let me write it this way, f of w like that. This is the actual density would be equal to uh, 1 divided by, uh, this would actually be the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 pi because we're substituting in for sigma. Sigma squared was actually equal to 2. Okay, This needs to go all the way over. And then times e to the negative x, uh, well I'm actually using w now, minus 0 because mu is 0 squared divided by 2 times sigma squared, so this is just equal to 4. Okay, 2 times 2. So that's the density of, of w. So really what we're wanting to do then is to compute this, ex this expected value here. That's the same based on our little transformation there as finding the expected value of the absolute value of w, which is equal to... I'm going to go ahead and write out the full integration. It looks like this. But we're going to use our new density here clearly. Okay. This f of w, w. And I'm not going to write it all out again because it's already it's already written right here for you, but we but we can write this though. Absolute value of w times uh, the associated density, w like that. Okay. And it'll become really clear why we needed to know that density. Okay. So this is what we need to compute. 
and I'll turn the page here and continue to actually work uh, work this out and then show you the trick that we're going to use to actually compute the expected value of absolute value of W. Okay. So that quantity that we just wrote down can be written as follows. We're going to split up the integral since it was the absolute value of W here going from minus infinity to infinity we're going to split up this integral so whenever W is actually negative in this density we just need to multiply it by a negative to make it positive again. Okay, That'll give us the absolute value. And then when W is actually positive then we really don't need this absolute value and we just leave it positive. And that's what we'll do here. So this would then be equal to this then becomes 1 divided by actually 2 square root of pi and as I mentioned before we're going to put a big bracket here and then we're going to integrate from negative infinity to 0 of negative w because we want to actually have the absolute value and then f of and actually our density here and I'm going to actually write out what the density is here. I've already pulled out the constant. So what you're left with is negative w squared. You can convince yourself of this. This is just a little bit of algebra. dw. And then plus the other part, integrating from 0 to infinity. And here we just leave, we leave it as w. And then the rest of the density here, divided by 4. Uh, dw like that. Okay, let's close our bracket there. So in order to solve this, I'm not going to go through the calculus. I'm not going to bore you to, de um, to tears with that. But I'm going to give you a hint though. If you let, uh, using u substitution, u equal to w squared divided by 4 and du then would be equal to w over 2 dw. Alright, so we're going to actually do this here. Then you can show that this piece here is actually equal to, let's see, I'm just going to go ahead and do the integral here. 1 divided by the square root of pi. And we're going to evaluate this from negative e to negative u from 0 to infinity plus a negative e to negative u from 0 to infinity. Okay, that's actually what you end up with. And this turns out to be equal to 2 divided by the square root of pi, which is our final answer. That is the expected value of what we were originally looking for. The absolute value of x1 minus x2. Thank you.